Senator Ron Wyden held town meeting number 1083 in Gold Beach on May 28th. And as he traveled by car from Curry to Coos County for meeting 1084, KCIW spoke to him one-on-one. Hey, Lori. How you doing? What's going on? You driving? We're driving. We have had like 1,063 town meetings. How many? Excuse me, 1,083 town meetings. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're getting out and listening to folks. Well, what did you hear in Curry County last night? Well, there obviously was tremendous interest in this whole BOEM situation, you know, the federal agency handling uh, wind and fishing and the like. And you know what? I walked out of there thinking is that the federal government has got to do better and earlier environmental analysis and be out there listening to the community and consulting with the tribes. And we're going to get through this and uh, we're going to find a balance so that we can have both, so we can have uh, a recycle, a, a green energy and, and wind, and we can protect our fishing families, and I'm committed to getting it done. It's going to be a heavy lift, but we're going to make it happen. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I know that you do, that your early work was with the elderly, and I know that you've got a lot of passion when it comes to helping old folks. And here in Curry County, we're old. Is there anything that you see that the federal government can do better for us here in Curry County? Well, are our commissioners I, talking to you? They are. They always are very good about getting back. And uh, um, in particular, we need to lower, do more to lower the cost of medicine. I wrote the law that allows the federal government for the first time to negotiate to hold down prices. I think that's going to make a big, big difference, starting with the most Expensive drugs. We've got a cap on insulin. Uh, I can tell you, um, Southern Oregon has tremendous incidence of diabetes, and uh, we're moving in the right direction. But there's a lot more to do, and uh, and you bet. I've always felt that the most important issue is health is healthcare, because if you and your loved ones don't have your health, then everything else is pretty much going by the board. Well, I agree with you. And recently, we had a big health care scare here in the country, and COVID um, created some divisions that frankly surprised me. What did we learn from the COVID uh, project, I'll call it? Talk to me about how COVID affected the economy and how it affected how we look at well, health care here. The, the, the first thing is, you know, COVID was such a tremendous hit on our country in so many so many horrible, you know, ways, and we all still think of loved ones who, who aren't there for dinner now, and uh, and the cost is immense. On the plus side, one of the things that I'm proud of is I wrote the telemedicine law uh, that we used that made it possible to really expand coverage for folks uh, who are isolated in rural communities and the like. I think that's probably one of the few things that we took away from COVID in a in a positive kind of kind of way. I do think that um, some of the other areas that we focus on the expansion of unemployment insurance to gig workers, for example, another law that I wrote was uh, very helpful in those first three months when we got the six hundred dollars um, and I was basically going up against you know the Trump administration on it and we got it done. That made it possible for a lot of folks to buy groceries and pay rent. I know it certainly helped folks here in Curry County. It was a huge boom for them. Um, you know, speaking about the Trump administration, we might be looking at another one. There is a huge divide in our country, and it seems like our three pillars of government, are the lines are becoming blurred. They're not so separate and equal anymore. Can you talk to me a little bit about that, your, just your feelings about it? Uh, of course, the country is more polarized. You know, I continue to try to find, you know, common ground. I've got a book coming out uh, about that, uh, about chutzpah, which is something Jewish people know a lot about. It's about being bold and, and trying to find fresh solutions. And, you know, to me, when the candidates, you know, come around, and I have candidates come to visit with me of all political persuasion, but I say, give me an example of something that you'll work on with people from the other side. And uh, 
uh, I think that really putting a premium in our politics on finding ways to get people to work together. I mean, on, on mental health, in the gun safety bill, I work with the lead Republican, and we got six major mental health provisions, like particularly aid to schools so that they can do individual counseling under Medicaid. Uh, and we've had some bipartisan wins. They usually don't get as much press as the negative um, stories. <laughs> that's that's very true. That's very true. So can you talk to me a little bit about um, the older folks who are in Congress? We've got a lot of, I mean, frankly, you're 75, sir. We've got a lot of older men and women who are serving the country. Can you talk to me about maybe term limits or age limits? I'm a firm believer in the wisdom of old age, but they're not – Folks who are older don't necessarily think the way the younger folks do, and I'm wondering how you feel about that. Well, for, first of all, Lori, I don't think Western civilization is going to end with term limits, okay? I mean, you know, <laughs> nobody, nobody beats father time. That's the genius of our country. I do think that what's really relevant is the age of your ideas. And I came to the United States Senate, Morgan's first new senator in 30 years. And nobody knew how to use a computer. One person, Senator Pat Leahy of Vermont, was using a computer you know, frequently. And I got a chance to write a number of the early technology laws, the digital signatures law, for example, that people in Curry County used to click through their documents. It doesn't take hours and hours as it used to. The Internet tax non-discrimination bill, so you don't get... Uh, you know, taxed uh, for uh, activities online in a discriminatory way. The law and platforms that uh, says the individual is responsible for what they uh, post on a platform. And um, I don't pretend to know everything about all these issues, but I'll tell you, I sure know how to ask questions. And, you know, our tech people, we recruited them like they were LeBron James. They're really <laughs> fantastically talented. And uh, uh, I really do think when focus on, on this, it's really the age of your ideas. Uh, well, I can't, I can't disagree with you there. Can you talk to me just for a second about SCOTUS, what's going on with SCOTUS? There's a lot of concern, especially with the, the new revelations about uh, Justice Alito and, uh, and Justice Thomas um, about their ties to political organizations. Can you talk to me a little bit about the optics of that and what can be done the to fix it? Yeah. The optics are not good because people look to the court to make calls that are objective and not colored by uh, politics. And the Chief Justice, John Roberts, at one point summed it up. He said, my job is to be the umpire, to call balls and strikes. And I think what's been seen in the last few days with respect to the court and flying the flag upside down and the like is reflective of those issues, and clearly there are going to be discussions in the Senate with members of the Judiciary Committee and the court about how this is going to change and ensure, as John Roberts said, that they really are calling balls and strikes. I appreciate that, and I also appreciate the fact that most of your legislation, all of your legislation, um, is pretty much colorblind. It's not blue. It's not red. It affects all of us. The reason I put so much focus on trying to be bipartisan, and I call it principled bipartisanship. Bipartisanship is not about taking each other's bad ideas. If you only try to get your side on an issue and you do manage to pass it, the other side doesn't have a vested interest in then making it work. So the laws that are most likely to be sustainable are ones that are bipartisan. That's what's in the interest of Oregon. That's what I focus on. Thank you so much. And on behalf of KCIW, thank you and your incredible staff. We're trying to go full power. Um, Curry doesn't have any emergency broadcast system here, so we're kind of the only game in town. And your staff has just been tremendous. Uh, I, I just really appreciate well, hope, all of them. We're all in. Thank you so much. Thank you so all much. Right, take Drive care. safe. Bye-bye. Have a good time. You too. Bye. Again, that was KCIW's interview with United States Senator Ron Wyden. For KCIW News, I'm Lori Gallo-Stoddard.